the process of classifying things in biology is called taxonomy. And the man who invented taxonomy, Carol Linnaeus, did this, organizing things into groups based on their similar features. For example, if you look at humans and dogs, both breathe air, they both have hair, they both drink milk as babies, and those type of traits are what cause us to classify both of them as mammals. One of the things I want you to know, one of the things I want you to try doing, is using a dichotomous key. In a dichotomous key, di means two, you have two options at every stage. Yes or no, true or false, it's pretty straightforward. Keys help guide your thinking about this and ask you questions about the organisms. For instance, yes it has spots, no it doesn't have spots, yes it has stripes, no it doesn't have stripes. Those are the types of questions that you'll be asked. After you say it has spots, no that's false, then it has stripes, no that's also false, you'll be able to go through the entire list and if the designer designed the key properly, you will be able to figure out what organism you're dealing with. In this taxonomy lab, you're going to watch a video talking about how it's been done in some types of fish. You're going to be doing the same thing using pictures of snails. It's in an online exercise from Howard Hughes Medical Institute. After that, we'll do another video about fish. We'll talk about a molecular trait, a DNA similarities or protein similarities that can be used to classify things. And after that, then you'll watch a video on taxonomic trees, just how you represent this data. There are a couple problems with this method that I want you to know. One of the ways that dichotomous keys will fail is if a new species moves into the area. If you don't revise that key, you try to use it on a new species that has moved into the area, you're going to get the wrong answer. One of them is that you might have a dichotomous key that has a question that's not appropriate for when you're using the key. For instance, the uh, University of Florida has a dichotomous key to snakes. And one of the questions in there is, are the scales keeled or are they not? That's a fine question for dealing with a captive specimen you can look at through the glass or a dead museum specimen. Yes, you're getting stretches. Or a uh, dead museum specimen where you're looking at the skin. That's really a bad question to be asking if it's out in the field and a person doesn't know what this snake is and they don't know if it's safe or not, is it poisonous or not, they're not going to get close enough to look at the structure of the scales. So if you design a key, you have to have questions that are appropriate for the people who are using it. And the third problem, if you're making a dichotomous key, is that you might make a key that has bad information on it, false information. Someone who's not familiar with the species in the area tries to make the key without local assistance, without some person in the area who knows the species. We've had big mistakes in the past. They used to classify adult and juvenile zebra sharks as separate species because they didn't know that this little striped shark would grow up to be that larger spotted shark. They used to classify male and female stoplight parrotfish as separate species because they didn't know that this red fish and this green fish were the same thing. It wasn't until we kept them in captivity and we saw, oh, that brownish red fish, it, it turned into the blue fish and changed sex along the way. We're like, oh, they have to be the same kind of fish. Watch the videos, do the on online exercises, fill out the handout, and then go answer the questions on the quiz about taxonomy. That's okay. I've been bitten. Ow, he has teeth. Ow, ow, ow. Somebody. In taxonomy. So. Yeah. Mosquito in the mouth.